this is a, a bog village. It's a settlement right on the edge of, uh, there's a bog over there. Uh, the bog played an important role in that it provided peat for uh, fuel. There wasn't a lot of wood to cut down and so they would burn the peat and that would provide fuel for, well, blacksmithing um, or just you know, warming a general place. This is a restored bog village um, that was destroyed during the famine. And here, I'm gonna go inside this house here. You can just see it. This is gonna be really good. It smells like, uh, it smells like burning peat. But as you can see, the dwellings were really small. Now this is a, this is much nicer than the average one. You can see there, it's basically two rooms, baby, pretty small bed for two people. Um, yeah, this is, this is pretty tiny, but, um, so there's the, the peat from across the road and they would, uh, they would use that as the fuel source. So villages such as this would pop up near the bogs and the people would, uh, get the peat and then trade it. So now all of these have been restored. See here, there's, uh, I'm gonna show you really quickly here what a non-restored uh, dwelling would have looked like. See here, this one, uh, see the roof is gone. So there's a window there, the inside is, kind of return to nature. Um, now this one right here is the most interesting because we have the story. The woman that lived here was a widow, her, and she got kicked out of her dwelling and she was the mother of six. This is Bridget O'Shea's cottage. Um, so she was a mother of six and she couldn't pay the rent during the famine so she got kicked out by the landlord and it says here ruins like this are a frequent sight in the irish countryside due to eviction and mass immigration of the irish people bridget was a widow who was evicted with oh, i'm sorry five children uh whilst pregnant and um she got kicked out ended up having a stillborn child and um uh it's because when the famine uh, hit in uh, they were supposed to hand over a percentage of their crop as the rent and when the crop failed they couldn't pay the rent so they got evicted because all of the land in Ireland was owned by English landlords. So what the English landlords would often do to prevent her from moving back in is that they would burn the roof off and the roofs were all natural as you can see so there was no way to move back in and I mean look at that there's a tree growing back up and, and it's actually you know kind of out of the cottage, so. Um, it's a pretty small village. There probably only would have been maybe like 40 or 50 people living in the whole village. But, see here's the peat I was talking about right here. Right next to the hen house. And this right here was sort of a drinking establishment. Illicit drinking house, selling alcohol without a license. The license would have been granted by the English. But, uh, see here, this no, would have been like, a oh, okay. little place to be social, <laughs> see, there you go. and I think she's had too much to drink already, she looked like she's pretty comfortable. Yep. So, anyway, pretty small place, and, and small little villages like this would have dotted the Irish countryside. So there would have been thousands of these little villages. Um, but this one in particular was important because it was next to the the peat bog. So uh, it had a particular function for the community.